Rise to the Pledge of Allegiance. Place your right hand over your heart. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam City Clerk, would you call the roll? Yes. Yes, Mayor Quorum is present for the City Council, Successor Agency, and Housing Authority. Any members of the public that wish to dial in for public comment would dial 888-251-2949 or 215-861-0694 using this access code, 1871143-POUND. That's one eight seven one one four three pound Operator, are there any callers? And this is for public comment on any agenda item. Yes, there are callers. If you'd like to comment, please press pound two on your telephone's keypad to enter the queue. You'll hear a notification when your line is unmuted. At that time, please insert your name and your comment. Operator, are there any callers? Moving to the first comment. Your line is unmuted. Please go ahead. Yes, this is anonymous. Um, the one nine, the eleven nine twenty one minutes. Um, it's ironic that you voted on the governor's edict regarding the Brown Act, because it's one of the many times that you've repeatedly violated the Brown Act. We were there, we had comments, and we were kept on getting disconnected, and we were not allowed to see. Miss Kraft, hold on a second. Is this on an agenda item? Is this on an agenda item? Is this on an agenda item? Could you please read your agenda then? I just told you what it was about, and you keep on wasting my time. Please start my time over. Please let me know when you start my time over. Thank we're not, you. We're not starting your time over. Which item, ma'am? You're wasting my time and you're violating the Brown Act by interrupting because I already stated regarding the minutes and which minutes it was, and it's on the agenda. All right, now, go ahead. that's a violation mm -hmm. of the Brown Act. Note it. Now you need extra time because otherwise you're violating the Brown Act even more. There's questionable media costs regarding a bunch of different things on there. And also, um, so the mayor needs to be censored and the, 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 um, you guys need to start talking up and saying things. Also, we're wondering if we ever got any um, comment about the BMW $9,000 thing because we see there's not any more BMW motorcycles being paid for. And um, there's a lot of things that are on that warrant register that are very questionable. And we need to have more information about, like, while the towing costs for city vehicles, is this for the thing for the stadium? What is it for? Um, in addition, you are... You know what? This is so unfair, and the mayor does this on purpose to try to throw us off. He also violates the Brown Act when someone says they are anonymous. That is how they should be referred to. If they do not say who they are, they are not to be re replied. To, they're not to be mentioned or any names attached to them or their voices or anything else because you don't know if you're right or not. You're just still guessing. Violation of the Brown Act, as usual, and stop interrupting us. You still have a minute left, Ms. Kraft. Excuse me, I don't know who you're talking to, but you're exceedingly rude, unprofessional, you're misogynist, it's based on your behavior, you're unfair to the citizens, you've been harassing and attacking us for forever and creating a really unsafe and toxic environment for women in this city. We've experienced it. Thank you. Operator, next caller. Moving on. Caller, your line is unmuted. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, I wish to address three agenda items. I am Ray Haller, the trustee for our family trust, which owns a house on 118th Street near Yukon Avenue, District 4, Crenshaw Imperial Village, parking zone 11, Englewood homeowners for over 70 years. In today's agenda, I find interesting the juxtaposition of three items, PH1, transit-oriented development plan, PH2, transportation impact fees, and PH3, water capacity charge. Broadly, I support these items, but propose a change to the TOD and have a question about the WCC. 
working in reverse order. The documentation for the water capacity charge is clear in that it will apply to new construction water customers of the city slash MWD, but I am unclear as to whether it applies to customer service by Golden State Water, as is our Public house. Hearing. I assume hey, most sir, of the and Sir, the city it, clerk... In fact, the city clerk Hello? confirms you this is for the public hearing. So what we're going to have to do right now is respect your comments to the agenda items that are not on the public hearing. Uh, uh, I misunderstood. Okay, so uh, what you're... What, what you're so I will stand by. Well, okay, good, because you're referring to the public <laughs> hearing. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, well, uh, all thank, right. Thank you. We'll talk to you a little later. I have right our next all caller. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I got a question. I want to make sure. Uh, I, I wanted to comment on DR1 and PH1. Should I wait? or is well, this PH, time? PH1, you you'll have to it? wait. DR1, you can comment on. Okay, perfect. Okay, so my name is Corey Crocker. I'm a member of the Southwest Regional Council of Carpenters. I'm recording on, uh, I'm sorry, I'm um, making a comment on DR1. Um, aside, I, I live in, grew up in, in the area, uh, work in the area, reside in the area. Um, I believe that, uh, this project environmental impact will, the project will impact me. Uh, the city should require the project to be built utilizing a local skilled and trained workforce, uh, local hire and local skilled and trained workforce requirements, reduce construction related environmental impact. Um, got a call coming in. Um, uh, in the recent 2020 report titled Putting California on the High Road, a Jobs and Climate Action Plan for 20, a California Workforce Development Board concluded that investments in growing, diversifying, and upskilling California's workforce can positively affect returns on climate mitigation efforts. Moreover, just this year, South Coast Air Quality Management District uh, found that the use of local state certified apprenticeship programs and a skilled and trained workforce with a local hire component can result in air pollution uh, reductions. Other cities have not hesitated to uh, apply skilled and trained workforce requirements for private developments uh, and, and projects in their city. Recently, the city of Hayward in Northern California adopted skilled and trained workforce requirements into their general plan and municipal code. Local skilled and trained workforce requirements can boost economic development and mitigate transportation and greenhouse gas impacts by minimizing vehicle miles traveled. The Southwest Regional Council of Carpenters believes that the agreement as currently written for this project uh, critically, is critically flawed. The project's exclusive negotiation agreement requires that merely 15% of the project's uh, residential units be set aside for affordable housing. The State Surplus Land Act requires that at least 25% of the units be set aside for affordable housing. Thank you for my time. Thank you so much. Operator, next caller. Your line is unmuted. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. This is an anonymous call. I'm calling on behalf of a 91-year-old senior veteran who wants the Crenshaw Imperial Todd project canceled. Canceled, canceled. This is his forever home. We do not want the Crenshaw Imperial Todd project to go forward. I'm speaking on behalf of a 91 senior veteran. Which, which, which ma'am, ma which item number is this? PH. This is this, this is, is this is, is the top the, the environmental the okay, environmental okay, the ma project. Ma'am, the reason I asked you because this is a public hearing item, and we haven't called the public hearing yet, so you'll have to wait for the public hearing. When is the public hearing? It'll be coming up in a few Simon. minutes. Be coming up in a few minutes. Thank like you. within the next fifteen twenty minutes. Uh, Hello. I, I hope so. I hope so. Uh, and so uh, then you're gonna open you're gonna open up to the public. Yes, we are. Uh, Hello, what is your name? What is your name? What is your huh? Operator, next caller. What is your name? Operator. What is your name? Operator, next caller. Operator, what is next caller. Next caller, please. Caller, your line is unmuted. 
Uh, Gil Matthew, District 4, Man City Council. I'm talking on the, some of the items in uh, about the Motorola uh, purchase for the police. See, that's the example I'm talking about that you should put in order what is absolutely in place for for cameras for the police. Now, anyone with, with common sense would say have cameras for the police to protect them in the radio. I mean, what kind of thing is thinking? It doesn't make sense. Cameras should be a priority for the police department. Now, what part of that you do not understand? You try to get along with the council. You try to participate, and you don't listen. You do not listen. And then you want everybody to agree with the council and be on the same page. But you got to learn to listen to the people and what they say. Now, there's public hearings on that. There's many of them. And I'm going to wait for that, too. But it's something that is wrong that you need to correct. And I'm not negative, and I'm not all this. I listen to what you're saying. You just want us to fail and all that stuff. I don't know what, what, what you guys are adults or what are you? Nobody wants the city to fail. I, mean, I don't understand those kind of remarks. Or you tell the well, government I do, you know, he don't agree with nothing. I'm so happy he agree. Hey, that's unnecessary. And it's only two of you doing it. And then lately, uh, the other one did it. You know, the, the two that you bought the console for on, on your uh, donations to the elections. See, people are watching. Anyway, I'll wait for you with the public hearing. And you guys have a good day, man, but <coughs> put a check on your, on your, on, on your behavior. You're a city council. You're city fathers. People look up to you as representatives of the city. And the point I'm making up to now, you guys have been an embarrassment. Operator, and I can't next say caller. much about At this time, there are no further callers. We'll close public comment. Item 1, CSA 1 and H1. Warrant register. Move the payment. Second. Madam City Clerk. City Council, successor agency members, and housing authority members, Dodson. Aye. Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Fogg. Aye. Mayor Chairman Butts. Aye. Madam Clerk, what's the next scheduled matter? Mayor, the next scheduled matter is a public hearing to consider multiple actions associated with the Westchester Veterans and Crenshaw Imperial Transit Oriented Development Plan and Design Guidelines. Has the notice of the hearing been given in time, form, and manners required by law, and do you have the affidavit on file? Notice has been given and an affidavit is on file. Have communications been received on the matter? Communications have been received and passed out to the City Council. Is there a staff report on the matter, Mr. City Manager? There is, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Christopher Jackson, Sr. of the Economic Community Development Department will be giving the staff report. <coughs> okay. Please, Mr. Jackson. Uh, good afternoon, Mayor, um, City Council. Thank you for the opportunity to present this to the public. Um, I wanted to start out uh, with obviously um, over giving an overview over the events that have occurred in the past so that there's clarity regarding what uh, not only the intent, um, but the purpose of the two TOD plans that uh, are being considered uh, today. Um, let me start by saying uh, we began by having um, a detailed discussion and analysis, looking at both the Westchester veterans as well as 
the Crenshaw Imperial uh, areas. Those two areas have uh, transit stations around them. And as a, a result of that, we received a grant from uh, Metro that allowed us, as we did with our other two uh, transit plaza areas, the opportunity to have a plan around uh, and have direct impact upon the new transit uh, stops that are in the city of Inglewood. And certainly we're excited about those. Uh, but it did present an opportunity to really look and evaluate what type of zoning was appropriate for those areas. Uh, it did present also an opportunity to consider uh, how we could further um, align the, um, the metro stations with the growth that we're experiencing in the city. Um, in addition to the impact of both affordable housing as well as housing in general, and, and, and how uh, the city is just growing expedition, expeditiously uh, and- Exponentially. Well, ex, well yeah. That. I, I like expeditiously, but you can, I'll use your word. Um, <laughs> so, so and, and part of that uh, means that you have to rethink and reimagine. Many of you know I come from many, I worked at a number of cities. And um, I've seen it done well and not so well. And I have to commend this city on its forethought and its purpose direction in terms of how land use is being modified in the city to address what's going on, not only locally, but globally. So with that, one of the things that uh, we looked at, obviously, were these two TOD plans. And as a, as a result of our, our initial meeting at the Planning Commission hearing, we heard a number of residents and we heard their concerns and specifically you know, I want to thank uh, Councilman Morales. I want to thank uh, Councilwoman Falk, Mayor Butts, um, Councilman Padilla, Councilman Dotson, all of the phone calls that came in because they were all very concerned about what the public was perceiving the, the TOD was going to do. And so we huddled uh, individually and worked with our consultants and came up with some modifications. And so I just want to set the stage for that. So as I kind of go through my part of the presentation, you understand kind of foundationally why we uh, chose to go that, that route. So when we look at the actions that have occurred, this obviously the Planning Commission considered this matter on November 3rd, 2021, and they took certain actions recommending to the council. So this recommendation that this document that you're reviewing now is, is been endorsed uh, by the Planning Commission as addressing many of the key goals and objectives that have been established in the city and how we're gonna affect these particular areas. Um, the Planning Commission recommended certification of the final environmental impact report. They uh, recommended adoption of the general plan amendment associated with this project, the adoption of the zoning code amendment associated with this project and zone change, and then the adoption ultimately of both the Westchester veterans as well as the Crenshaw Imperial uh, transit oriented design plans and guidelines. There were, uh, as a result of some of the, uh, the meeting that was held earlier, uh, questions about how it was gonna affect single family homes and there was a number of issues about property. So I want to clarify that. Um, one of the questions and, and really wanna thank Mayor Butts for you know, we, we designed some Q&A to respond to the public, to simplify it and make the public, give the public information so they understood what was and was not happening. And as a result of that, you know, I'll just run through these real quickly. One of the big questions, is the city gonna take your property? No, so he's not taking any property as a result of this project. It's simply zoning modifications that are occurring to further align with the transit stations. Why was my property included in the plan area? Well, the property was included in the plan area because as part of the metro process, they look at about a one half, one half mile distance around every transit plaza. So as we did with our downtown station and our, our Fairview Heights station, we simply drew a circle around that area and these were the properties that were going to be, um, we felt in metro felt mostly uh, aligned with those stations. They would be the ones most impacted by it. So that was the simple reason and rationale 
for making that decision for including those properties. So will the zoning change in the R1 and R2 areas? Let me start by saying that the zoning was never going to change in the R1 and R2 areas. The plan did not make any changes to that. It simply included those properties in the, uh, that one half mile area around the station. But we heard the public loud and clear, and we made a decision after consulting, after speaking with our consultant, talking about what the implications were going to be, having a discussion with Metro, that we would remove the R1 and R2 areas out. Mm -hmm. of both the Westchester veterans as well as the Crenshaw Imperial plan areas. Mm -hmm. So most, uh, all of the areas are, are, are multifamily zoned areas, as, but mostly commercial, airport commercial, commercial zoned areas that the plan really has an impact upon. And one of the things that we identified even at the last planning commission meeting was the wonderful project that we see in being constructed right now in our downtown TOD, which is our Inglewood Gateway project. Um, that 200 plus units, the new uh, grocery um, and market store is gonna be coming in, uh, in the uh, retail store coming in, as well as some of the restaurants are gonna be occurring there as well. This is the type of development that's going to spawn those particular areas. And again, make Inglewood the hub that it, uh, it already is. Does the plan include any new rail lines other than those that exist are already under construction? No. This is just to augment those existing rail lines. The city does not make the decision regarding those particular rail lines on the metro line. Uh, so those are handled at the metro level. But as far as new, new uh, rail locations, no. How will a TOD plan impact future development? Well, it sets a groundwork for future development in the plan. We call them design guidelines. It's the vision of the area, what can occur naturally over time. And understand that these plans are usually implemented over a 10 to 20 year period of time. So there's not an instantaneous change that occurs. It occurs gradually over time. And we see the city uh, uh, respond to what's going on, not only locally, but globally. Will the inclusion of my property in the plan area affect my property taxes? No. This does not affect, have any effect what's, uh, whatsoever. The mayor has explained in many of the meetings how the property tax system works. And so I won't bore you with that, but the reality is no. It, it would not have any direct impact. Prop 13 sets forth those, those standards. Um, is the city building affordable homes in the plan area? Directly, no. Encouraging, yes, strongly encouraging. As a matter of fact, we see a number of housing projects that are occurring in and around these areas, specifically because of the new standards that have been established in the existing TOD areas, and we see that opportunity that happens as far as affordable homes are concerned. But the city itself is not uh, building any affordable homes, but we will be supporting private development as it occurs. What public outreach and information about the TOD has the city provided? Well, we conducted a number of outreach campaigns. Unfortunately, as many of us understand, COVID-19 had a direct impact on, uh, and there was a break, if you will. And unfortunately, that break created, uh, you know, a disconnect. And, but there were. We had our stakeholders meeting. We had our outreach meetings. And those are, are laid out in a staff report as well as available uh, through our, our planning division. Um, and they include multiple community meetings. Uh, there was meetings held at BNQ, at Faithful Central Bible Church, U.S. Veterans, uh, um, to, to have discussions about how this plan was going to be laid out, similarly how we did with the existing two TOD plans. So why, why is the city writing that? I won't be redundant. The, the, the Metro grant made an opportunity. It created an opportunity for funding where the city did not have to use its direct money to create this plan. These plans are very expensive. Um, some of these are hundreds of thousands of dollars. And so many cities, uh, without the help of agencies such as uh, Metro, which uh, the mayor uh, sits on, on Metro board um, and is uh, intimately past chair. So these, these organizations make it available for local municipalities to use resources that are garnished uh, from state and, and county funds. So I gave you all the pretty picture stuff. I'm going to let um, and turn this, this portion over to 
our planning manager, Ms. Mindy Wilcox, who will kind of dig into some of the nuts and bolts, There's and then more. we'll be available for questions. Mindy? Good afternoon, Mayor and Council Members. Um, we're excited to be here today presenting this plan to you. As you know, we've worked on it for a number of years. And so just want to elaborate first to start a little bit on the outreach um, that Chris mentioned. We did uh, conduct three stakeholder meetings to discuss the plans and three community workshops, as well as some pop-up events, pop-up outreach events in the plan areas. And shown here is the Westchester Veterans TOD plan area. Existing land uses include a large amount of industrial space, commercial space, and multifamily residential, and it comprises 379 acres. And shown here is the proposed zoning. In development of this TOD plan, some of the overarching goals were uh, to the west of the 405 to leverage existing artist assets in the immediate area of the station to create an arts cluster, preserve the viability of industrial uses while also expanding the opportunity for residential in appropriate areas. And then to the east of the 405, Extending the mixed-use corridor zoning designation along Manchester to connect to the downtown TOD plan. And our two areas, as was mentioned, were left unchanged. In the Crenshaw Imperial plan area, existing land uses include commercial and multifamily residential uses and comprises 103 acres. And the concept in this plan area included creating a southern gateway for the city, allowing for the option of mixed use residential on the commercial sites, which would also incorporate significant open space, and designed guidelines to ensure that the massing of new development is sensitive to the surrounding residential uses. And then lastly, that R1 and R2 areas would be unchanged. As part of the plan, it includes new or modified zoning designations as well as modified zoning regulations. Some of the zoning code areas that the TOD plan modifies relate to building height, uh, building setbacks, parking regulations, the planning approval process required, and form-based development requirements, among others. In regards to height in Westchester veterans, currently allowed along Manchester, which is the areas adjacent to the residential in that plan area, it's adjacent to multifamily, six stories is currently allowed on that in those commercial zones. And as proposed, um, the maximum height along those corridors would be four stories. And uh, same setback, but it brings it more in line, more compatible with the surrounding multifamily residential. And in Crenshaw Imperial, adjacent to the two residential uses, six stories are, is currently allowed. And the standards are proposed to change to allow for only five stories in the areas immediately adjacent to single family residential with an increased open space setback. And furthermore, the height allowances step up as you move away from the existing residential with a maximum of 10 stories immediately adjacent to the intersection of Crenshaw and Imperial. In regards to parking, the plan also includes modest adjustments to parking regulations that are in line with other TOD parking standards that the city has previously adopted. And as an example, for general commercial, the code currently requires one space for every 300 square feet, and that would be adjusted to one space for each 400 square feet of commercial. And for residential, the parking standards would be, would be based on the number of bedrooms. In 
The draft plans also include a green streets transportation concept that could help support a pedestrian oriented multimodal environment. This concept includes transportation components such as bike infrastructure and improved pedestrian crossings, as well as bioswales for roadway drainage. The last component of the plans is implementation. The documents include steps needed to fully implement the TOD plans, and they include such actions as branding the areas with signage and streetscape improvements, considering the possibility to require inclusionary zoning for residential developments and the creation of a property owner-based improvement district for the two plan areas. There are five actions requested today of the City Council. First is certification of the EIR. And this environmental report includes mitigation and found that there were no impacts that could not be mitigated to a less than significant level. In addition, one of the comment letters um, received today um, did comment on some uh, components of the EIR. However, we've determined that the comments made today are identical to those made in their this, the same commenter's October 6th letter, and those were responded to in the final EIR in the response to comments. The second action today that we're requesting is adoption of a resolution approving a general plan amendment. This general plan amendment would amend the land use designation in the areas to TOD and would also make corresponding text changes and additionally, the general plan amendment would modify the circulation element to incorporate text changes related to TOD. The third requested action is introduction of a zone, cha zone change, which would incorporate new or, expanding or expanded zoning designations in the TOD areas. The fourth is introduction of an ordinance approving a zoning code amendment, which would make the, change, the text changes previously described to the development standards. And fifth, adoption of a resolution approving design guidelines for the TOD plan areas. And before I close, I'd like to note that we have on the line available for questions, the principal of a royal group, Phil Burns, mm. as well as representatives from the CEQA consulting firm, Use Metis Consulting, uh, consult representative from our economic consultant and representative from our transportation consultant. And well, okay, I, I don't think the council is going to need that, but let, let's let's like break this down simply. This is a plan that was developed with funds from a grant that Metro provided, so that we could consider zoning changes to impact the viability of certain areas that were near transit lines so that people could avail themselves of other modes of transportation. That's why it has reductions in the number of parking spaces required. That's why it mentions bicycling. And so that's what this is for. There's nothing mandatory about this, is there? No. There is nothing in this plan that contemplates, involves, authorizes the taking of anyone's property, is there? No. There's nothing in here that requires anyone to put... Um, ADUs or, or other alternative living structures on their property, is there? No. This is just a change, a contemplated change in the zoning that will allow in the future there to be development more compatible with mass transit. Is that right? Yes. Again, there's nothing in this report that has anything to do with anyone's property taxes or any taxes whatsoever. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, and now, as I understand it, Crenshaw Imperial's been taken out of the report. Is that right? The R1 properties in that area. And so, so that means the single-family residences are not even contemplated for changes in this report. All right, thank you very much. No, we won't need any more. Um, now what we're going to do is go to public comment. Mm -hmm. And I hope that young lady that was on before had her questions answered, but go ahead. Operator. Moving to public comment, you may press pound two on your telephone's keypad if you wish to speak a comment. Once you've been unmuted, please state your name and your comment. One minute. Moving to the first call. Your line is unmuted. 
Hello, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Hello, can you hear? Okay, this is Chris. Hi, Chris. I heard all that you guys said. I'm that same. I'm that same woman who's an advocate for a 91 year old <sighs> senior veteran who has a forever home in in that area. And I understand that you took that part out. But let me just tell you one thing: all money is not good money. And so I still say I want this project canceled because I said you can't factor in the air and the noise. I want the Todd Project, Crenshaw Imperial Project canceled, canceled, canceled. I want to be documented saying I'm canceling. The person I'm rec- representing is probably one of the oldest seniors in the area who is a veteran, forever home. His wife is, his, you know, has, has put all kinds of fruit trees in there. I just said, you can't factor in the air, the noise. They're doing donuts on Imperial on Imperial and Crenshaw practically every other week when the when SoFi is open. It's like the wild, wild west. They do the donuts and here come the cops. The noise, the air, the pollution. I want the Imperial Crenshaw Todd Project canceled, canceled, canceled. I want it documented. And if it does not cancel, Jesus and the rapture will have come before it starts. Okay, thank you, ma'am. But there, it, there, it might make myself clear. Thank you, ma'am. There is no project. Operator, next caller. Your line is unmuted. Please go ahead. One minute, caller. Oftentimes, the stake. Oftentimes, the stakeholders have not been informed, as you say that they have, and despite your, your outreach stuff, state, stakeholders have often been handpicked. For instance, I hope the same thing doesn't happen as happening at the Fairview Heights Apartments, is what they're trying to call it, where Link Housing and others are ignoring and disrespecting current Fairview Heights residents and co-opting the name, one of the oldest sections of Inglewood. No one, the city, the county, or the developers are taking responsibility, and they should be, and it should be named something else. Now, the origins of um, and the ongoing lack of outreach due to COVID-19, it's been going on for before COVID-19. You should be reaching people at their homes and their mailing addresses. And you've already publicly stated that you're ignoring constituents and have blocked constituents from the city hall by security. And there's no access to info. And you want to request info regarding the affordable housing and, and other basics that's not taken into consideration. And the basics here have not been taken care of either. We don't have our streets. We don't have our sidewalks. And we've been here for a long time. We can't use these things. You're trying to make it walkable. Okay, but you thank you, Ms. Kraft. Operator, next caller. Inclusion or access Operator, and overload. next caller. No confidence vote in you. Caller, your line is unmuted. Please go ahead. In the letter dated today from the Economic and Community Development Department, page 5 in Table 1, parking requirements for all developed areas are proposed to be reduced from current requirements, suggesting that with their proximity to the metro, retro uh, residents and employees will need less parking. This is not supported by facts in Crenshaw Imperial Village. Just visit the east side of Crenshaw, one block north of the metro station some late evening, and you will see every street parking space consumed by residents from the multi-story, multi-unit apartments there. Clearly, residents there have not given up their cars, even on the metro, which has been there for years. It's just one block away. There is some late night parking on the other side of the street. But eventually, if, if buildings on both sides of Crenshaw are, are built to the maximum and without zoning, built to the maximum with reduced parking, that means that you're gonna that those residents are gonna need to park on the street more, which is counterproductive to the citywide residential permit parking program. Please do not reduce parking capacity requirements with the transit oriented development plan. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh up for the next caller. Operator. Operator, can you hear me? Your Caller, your line is unmuted. Hello. Hello, Mr. Matthew. Hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you just fine. All right, it's Gil Matthew. I'm calling uh, from District 4. On the overlay, on this uh, Green Line Crenshaw Station, you've been dealing with this since February 2015, okay? You were awarded a contract from Metro. Now, all of this time, you had meetings, and who knows when, at Faithful Central Bible Church, 
and Cuban in schools. At these work, workouts, the focus discussed was issues and opportunity within the station areas. Now, fast forward. That's four years ago. Mr. Matthew, you're at time. I'll give you 10 more seconds. What I think is for being so gracious. But this needs to be discussed some more. All right. All right, I'm asking. Thank, thank, you, thank, you, thank you, Mr. Matthews. Me. Operator, next caller. Comments? With that, we'll close public uh, comment. Um, if if there are no council comments, uh, to, go ahead. Thank you, and thank you, Mayor, for uh, helping to clarify the report. Um, I'd like to first just thank my residents who came out uh, when they are, when they were confused, basically, about our communication with them. The important part here is that um, we need to start seeing this TOD as an improvement to our city, an opportunity to give us tools. Tools. to em That's encourage beautiful. developers to do certain uh, investments here in the city of Inglewood, which I'm very proud of. What ended up happening is that it turned the conversation into what was not going to happen. We had to ensure that the residents knew that their properties were safe, their communities were safe, which they are. We would never allow any of that to happen. Um, but we started uh, to forget what this does allow us to do, which we're real proud of. Uh, the west side of, of the 405 is going to start having the opportunity to bring in uh, some, some housing sprinkled around in the area that creates a different kind of community uh, that would be an excellent community. And, and this, these are opportunities that start to change the city for the better. As the mayor said, along the corridors uh, here on Manchester, the encouragement of the development, which we've always wanted. Now this is going to allow it. But one important thing that the mayor said is that that doesn't mean it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. That just gives us these tools to be able to start those conversations and to open up these avenues for investment. Uh, and I, I, I didn't want it to seem like we were guarded in this decision. We're all for this decision. The confusion was in regards to how uh, it was stated to the public. Uh, that, I'll say, was on our part. And now that it's been clarified and the residents know there's absolutely no effect on their home, no effect on their residents, no effect on their zoning, uh, uh, now we can start that other conversation where we start seeing the positive part of this. And I just wanted to clarify that, Mayor, just because it had changed so much back and forth. Thank you, Councilman Padilla. Thank you, Mayor. And good presentation, uh, Eloy, regarding those points. I just wanted to, first off, thank Mr. Jackson and Ms. Wilcox on a very comprehensive presentation, your staff report, everything's <coughs> in there, very good. You know, it's just that sometimes what happens, people start listening to folks that don't know, mm -hmm. you know, what's happening. They listen to neighbors. They listen to, to uh, you know, gossip, you know. Uh, and then they get on their little social networks and they spread that misinformation and and it, it just keeps going and going. And, and we've always told folks, please, if you have an issue, you know, we're all available. Give us a call, whatever. Send us an email. You know, we'll get you an answer. And so, you know, again, some folks did reach out and we were able to talk to them to lay to rest some of their, their that misinformation, the presentation that was done covered talking points that the mayor had brought up, working with staff to address some of these ongoing questions that we were getting. So, you know, again, this is a good thing. You know, it is. It truly is a good thing. Understand where the funds are coming from, right? You know, so, I mean, it, 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 we're fortunate to have this, but some people want to turn it into something negative, right? Right. Same thing when we did, you know, I want to get off topic, you know, talking about like other, you know, SoFi and and the forum and the Clippers. People try to make it turn into a, like it's a bad thing, you know, and so that I, I'm not into that, you know. So I just want to encourage folks, look, please give us a call. Give us an opportunity to discuss these with you guys. But this is a good thing for Inglewood. Thank you. Ms. Wilcox, what kind of property can you build on a lot that's zoned R2? You can build one to two units, typically. Can you build a single family residence on an R2 lot? Yes. Okay, so now, 
So that's flexibility. So you don't have to build a single family residence, but you can. You don't have to build two units, but you can. So this is more, but you can to allow you to build more density in areas that are considered to be near transit lines. Okay, so this is all this is. This is another, but you can do it if you want. And so we're trying to give ourselves flexibility for the future because we know housing is running out in California. And so what we're doing, we're taking codes that were put together in the 1940s and the 1950s and giving ourselves flexibility for the new future that's coming. And it's just that simple. There is no project contemplated. There is no mandatory anything that you have to do. And there is no money attached to it. Is that right? Thank you. I want to move items two through eight. Mayor. Madam Second. City Clerk. Mayor, um, we, we have, have to, to do, do uh, two, two and three. three. And I move items two and three. See, that's Second. why we have Second. a city. Wait, wait a minute. That's why we have a city clerk. See, because we don't know everything. Oh. All right. <laughs> so we're moving items two, two, and, two and three. three. Yes. All right. I'm moving two and three. Okay. And, and Second. Okay. And now, Madam City Clerk. Yes, sir. Council members Dotson. Aye. Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Fogg. Aye. Mayor Buds. Aye. Motion away for the reading. Second. Madam City Clerk. Council members Dotson. Aye. Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Fogg. Aye. Mayor Buds. Aye. I'll move introduce. item five. Oh, 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 move item five. Yeah. Introduction okay. of an ordinance. Second. Second. Same thing. Madam City Clerk. Council members Dotson. Aye. Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Fogg. Aye. Mayor Buds. Aye. Motion away for the reading. Second. Madam City Clerk. Council members Dotson. Aye. Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Fogg. Aye. Mayor Buds. Aye. Move seven and eight. Second. Madam City Clerk. Council members Dotson. Aye. Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Fogg. Aye. Mayor Buds. Aye. Madam Clerk, what's the next schedule matter? Okay, um, just real quick to just be be sure, Mayor. Mm -hmm. um, when you guys made the motion to introduce the ordinance, mm -hmm. the person moving the um, the motion for introduction is actually introducing the ordinance. Yes, that is exactly what happened. Yes, sir. Thank you. PH two. Next scheduled matter, Mayor, is a public hearing to receive public comments <clears throat> on the consideration to adopt a resolution amending the master fee schedule by adding transportation impact fees. Has the notice of the hearing been given in time, form, and manner required by law? And do you have the affidavit on file? Yes, Mayor. Notice has been given and an affidavit is on file. Have any communications been received? Yes, Mayor. Communications have been received and they've been passed out to council. Okay. Is there a staff report? Briefer than the last one. On Mayor, the, there is. Uh, Sharon Coyke, Assistant right. Finance Director, will give the presentation. Ms. Coyke, welcome. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor and members of the council, um, I'd like to start this presentation with an overview on the transportation impact fees and why we, the City of Inglewood, are interested in implementing them. The City of Inglewood is undergoing a historic transformation into a world-class sports and entertainment destination with the major employment center within the greater area, Los Angeles region. As Inglewood transforms into a major regional housing, employment and activity center, the number of vehicular trips associated with new jobs, retail, entertainment and residential opportunities is, ant is anticipated to increase. Based on historic traffic counts, traffic volumes, mm -hmm have been increasing at the rate of 1.5% per year. And many key intersections and highway corridors already experience congestion. New development increases the number of residents, employees and visitors that need to move around and have access to and from the city of Inglewood. <clears throat> the city is pursuing implementing transportation impact fees to help fund transportation infrastructure improvements that will address the increase in vehicle miles traveled in the city of Inglewood. Transportation impact fees are a type of impact fee that is charged to developers of new development projects to help support mobility improvements in the city. The intent is to have new development pay for its fair share towards funding citywide mobility projects that support the growth in employees and residents resulting from new development. Transportation impact fees 
offers cities a revenue stream that can be used to fund a variety of transportation improvements, which can help mitigate or offset transportation impacts. By law, these fees cannot simply go into a city's general fund, but must be specifically allocated to transportation projects. California cities have used revenues from impact fees to finance new or enhanced transit system improvements, intelligent transportation service improvements, roadway and inter intersection improvements, and first and last mile improvements. Um, do other cities have these fees? Transportation impact fees have been established for decades. In recent years, many communities throughout California are increasing, increasingly relying on transportation specific impact fees to ensure that the cost of transportation infrastructure and services necessary to support new development are not borne disproportionately by existing residents, businesses, and or property owners. The fee justification study prepared for the transportation impact fee compares the proposed fees with neighboring jurisdictions such as Culver City and Santa Monica West LA, Pasadena, as well as other cities in California, such as Corona and Sacramento, to ensure the fees were reflective of the latest practices and other successful programs. MGD Consulting and DTA, formerly David Tausig and Associates, completed a study to analyze the relationship between vehicle miles traveled created by new development projects and the need to implement the project list to support jobs and housing growth mobility needs. The study quantifies the fees related to new development projects based on land use to pay fair share fees towards the project list. The Nexus study found that the proposed mobility improvement fees are directly related and roughly proportionate, proportional to the impacts of new development. The project list is to be funded in part through the transportation impact fees, consists of improvements that have been identified in previous city planning efforts needed to accommodate planned growth. Who does the transportation impact fee apply to? Only new development will trigger the proposed transportation impact fees. The proposed transportation impact fees would apply to eight specific land use categories single family, multifamily, three commercial tiers, office, industrial, and institutional. The commercial sector was separated into three separate categories to differentiate the effect on transportation infrastructure among the various commercial businesses and to ensure that the proposed development pays its fair share. The categories structured with tier one have the land use with the lowest trip generations and tier three have the land uses with the highest trip generations. Commercial tier one, the lowest, includes businesses such as hair salons, furniture stores, and department stores. Commercial two includes uses such as automobile care centers, health and fitness clubs, and apparel stores. Tier three, the highest trips that are generated, has the land uses with Trip generations includes businesses such as quality restaurants, liquor stores, and supermarkets. Uh, for more information regarding the transportation impact fee justification study, it's included in the staff report and you can refer to it. Um, if you have any further questions or if you have any technical questions, our consultant, the DTA people, are on the phone available for any questions. Okay, real quick, Ms. Quakey. Mm -hmm. This transportation impact fee. Is this borne by property owners, uh, residential property owners in the city of Inglewood? No. Can we say that again? No. Okay. Now, is this is this fee assessed to people that do developments that might bring greater traffic to the city of Inglewood? To new developments. Okay. Now, is this law is this ex post facto, or is it from this day the day forward that it is um, ushered into law by the council? Going forward. Okay. So. So because the people are going to ask, well, what about SoFi Stadium? Well, they're built. It's going to be Correct. for businesses that come in the future. Correct. Right? I think those are all the questions that I have. Uh, public comment. Are there any persons uh, wish to address the council on the matter? One minute. Operator. Your line is unmuted. 
Um, we'd like to know what tier the Clippers are in since they haven't started building quite yet. But the city of Inglewood has decades overdue for affordable housing, and SB9 and SB10 have basically said there is no single-home residential zoning. Um, we have 100-year-old homes in the area of Fairview Heights, and so many of us will have to do a redevelopment on our homes. In addition, uh, the maintenance um, on, has been deferred by the city for decades regarding sidewalks, streets, this, and has this been ignoring is really the table. Not on and topic, Ms. Kraft. And yeah. exactly, this is this, on topic. It is, is on, on topic. This is not on topic, Ms. Kraft. For, it is too. It the, is too. And it's hypocritical for Ms. 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 Kraft, to say that you are available this, and you're this not. Is a this is a transportation dream. assessment. We have a no confidence vote for you. Exactly. And we are going to be assessed for it. And no, you guys you keep on avoiding no. the truth. No, you won't. That, yes, you have been. No, you, you won't. Have, we, eventually, we will be. If I put, if I no, put another won't. house on my property, I no, you two won't, pro- ma'am. Um, two on my property. That's a new job development. Prove it to me. You've been saying a lot of things. SB9, SB10 took away residential. Operator, single next caller, please. Anyway, your last oh. thing that you did Operator. Comments. Okay, then. Um, we received public comment. I don't think there are any council comments. I don't think. And uh, I move item two. I get Madam City Clerk. Council members Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Fogg. Aye. Mayor Butts. Aye. Madam Clerk, what's the next scheduled matter? Mayor, the next scheduled matter is a public hearing to receive public comments on the consideration to adopt a resolution establishing a new water capacity charge in accordance with AB 1600 as codified by California Government Code 66000-ETSEC. As notice of the hearing been given in the time, form, and manner as required by law, and do you have the affidavit on file? Notice has been given and an affidavit is on file. Have any communications been received? No communications have been received, Mayor. Is there a staff report on the matter? Uh, Mr. Mayor, there is. Mike Whipple of DFA, which is in association with Stephen Bucknam and Associates, will be providing the uh, presentation. However, I'd like to also say that this is very similar to the transportation impact fees. Instead of being paying for future infrastructure, for transportation, in this case, it would be for water. So there is no impact on current residents or current businesses or businesses that are currently, that have pulled building permits or are not within the city's water jurisdiction. So this is for future development? Correct. Mm-hmm. Everybody that owns the property now is good, right? That's correct, Mr. Mayor. Right. I don't even know where we need to report. Go ahead, sir. Well, thank you. And also... Uh... Ben Kerrigan is here. He's the, the uh, fellow who actually did the research and put together the analysis that allowed us to justify this particular fee. Okay. <clears throat> the uh, previous uh, presentation was very informative and basically... Do you want to lower the microphone, please? There you oh, go. Oh, the Thank people you. out there better? can hear you. Yes. The previous uh, presentation was very informative and basically covered a lot of the same concepts that I'll be covering in terms of how this type of uh, fee is developed. It's obviously uh, I know. that this, what I want to, uh, the first thing that we want to realize is the reason we're here today is because the city council previously, when you were considering water rate increases, directed the staff to determine if a fee would be appropriate for new development. Mm -hmm. And the result of that initiative from the council resulted in Bucknam and Associates being retained to prepare the analysis to justify the fee and to apportion the costs. The, the, The city of Inglewood is proposing a water connection and capacity fee, which will mitigate the impacts of new developments to the water system. The city's proposed water capacity fee was developed through a fair and equitable approach in accordance with AB 1600 and AB 3147. The fee will be a one-time payment by the developer at the time project development occurs, which would be after a building permit is issued. Existing customers are not impacted. 
The water capacity fee was developed to, uh, based on three components. We used the single family residential equivalent meter, which is a standard that's adopted by the American Water Works Association to allocate the cost between existing and proposed development of, to come up, or should say that the proportion of future develop, uh, future improvements that are required. The amount of the cost in each case was determined based on, for existing facilities, a replacement cost new, less depreciation analysis, which is the standard used for evaluations of water systems. The marginal cost component was based on the future improvements that are required, and those costs were allocated, a portion was allocated to new development. There's also a water rights component. The city has water rights. You rely on those water rights to, to provide water service. Approximately 50% of your source of supply is from water rights. If development does not provide additional capacity in terms of water rights, in effect, it shifts the burden of future development onto uh, so that uh, others would not have that uh, available water rights. The replacement cost component was $21,177,512. The cost was allocated with a based on the apportionment to um, for the capacity charge for EDU at seven hundred and sixty dollars. So can I ask you a question? Yeah. Is this a, a, a Mr. Mayor? Is this available in the uh, packet um, and online? It is, Mr. Mayor. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do, sir. I will tell you that most people are not going to grasp in the flow of your presentation what these numbers mean okay I think it's better if we just explain it like this the whenever you add more users to a system it requires more capacity whenever you add more users to a system it hastens the time that the original system will wear out and this fee is to anticipate and allocate fairly to people that build new things that puts stress on the system. Is that Thank correct you. or not? That's it. That's it. You've, you've said it very well. Okay. And, I, and that's all we need to know. Okay. Well, right. thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Okay. Public comment. Are there any uh, comments from the public? <laughs> One minute. Mine is unmuted. Caller, your device may be on mute. Moving to the next caller in the queue. No callers in the queue? Well, we'll close public comment. Are there any comments by the council on this matter? None, thank Hear, you. He hearing none, is there a motion? Motion to approve item two. Second. Okay. Thank Madam you. City Clerk. Council members Dodson. Aye. Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Falk. Aye. Mayor Butts. Aye. Madam Clerk, what's the next scheduled matter? Mayor, the next scheduled matter is a public hearing to consider approval of the draft fiscal year 2020 through 2021 consolidated annual performance evaluation report for submission to the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development, Los Angeles Field Office by the December 30th, 2021 deadline. Has notice of the hearing been given in the time form and manners required by law, and do you have the affidavit on file? Notice has been given, and an affidavit is on file. Have communications been received on this matter? No communications have been received, Mayor. Is Please. there a staff report on the matter? Mr. Mayor, there is. Uh, Mr. Roberto Chavez, the HUD program's manager, will give a brief presentation. <laughs> <laughs> They're learning. Good afternoon, Roberto, Mayor, welcome. Council, members of the public. Thank you for your time and attention. Today, we're requesting that the mayor and council conduct a public hearing to consider approval of the draft fiscal year 2020-2021 consolidated annual performance evaluation report, also referred to as the CAPER, 
for submission <coughs> to HUD. <clears throat> Today I'm, re I'm presenting the fourth cycle of the Consolidated Annual Performance and Evaluation Report uh, for the 2017 through 2021 Consolidated Plan. Just for uh, reference, the Consolidated Plan is a five-year kind of goals for the program. This document details the accomplishments made by the city using CDBG and Home Investment Partnership Program funding. The city allocated 200, just over 283,000 in CDBG funding for the minor home repair program. This home rehab program benefited low-income residents in improve, improving roofing, electrical, and plumbing for their homes. Upon completion, these projects resulted in the rehabilitation of 13 homes with more expected to be completed during the upcoming year. About 18 uh, City of Inglewood residents consisting of senior citizens um, age 62 or older and permanently disabled persons received temporary rental assistance program, also referred to as the TBRA. An additional 40 displaced families received rental assistance through the Homeless Tenant-Based Rental Assistance Program. Uh, also noted is the uh, Housing Rights Center provided fair housing counseling to approximately 350 families during that year. Uh, seniors were provided meals for about 169 seniors. Uh, youth programs were offered through a scaled-down program due to the COVID pandemic. Summer camps were also provided. HUD funding resources have been uh, stable in the recent years, and the city received additional funding through the CARES Act this year. Um, and, and we provided rental assistance uh, with some of those funding. These programs have worked to strengthen the city and will continue to assist residents as long as funding remains strong. Uh, with that, the recommendation is that the mayor and council uh, conduct a public hearing um, to approve the draft fiscal year 2020-2021 consolidated annual performance evaluation report so we can submit the report to HUD by a December 30th deadline. Thank you. Um, this concludes my report, and I'd be happy to take any questions. Uh, time for public comment. Operator, any callers uh, for public comment? One minute. Caller, your line is unmuted. <clears throat> Caller, your line is unmuted. Moving to the next caller, your line is unmuted. First of all, Brown Act violation, the operator knows that there were people that were online for the last one to make public comments, and the mayor run, ran over it roughshod, and he could hear her saying that there are people there. We've been barred from participation in some of these things, and also for the HUD report, it would be nice if you guys would stop allowing realtors to discriminate in the city of Inglewood against potential African-American home buyers, which happens a lot. I think that should go into the report as well, and also it's as a way to help people, and that stakeholders need to be more informed, and other people need to be more informed about the good work that CDBG is doing. Um, and then also we need more assistance from CDBG as well. You need to give people more time for the last one about the water thing since you guys did some illegal things and haven't notified people properly regarding the water issue, and then you voted on it, Mayor Butts. <laughs> that was so nice. All right, operator, next. Do I find it funny? You find everything funny. It's so <laughs> hilarious, too. isn't it? Operator, next. Caller, please. Ignoring people. Operator. Ignoring people all the time. And, and operator, can you hear me? <laughs> Your line is unmuted. <laughs> <laughs> are no further comments? <sighs> Operator, are there any other callers? There are no further comments. Well, with that, we'll close public comment. Um, are there any council comments? He, hearing none. Move approval item number two. Second. Madam City Clerk. Council members Dodson. Aye. Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Falk. Aye. Mayor Butts. 
I, consent calendar. Items 2 through 11. So moved. Move. Second. Second. Madam City Clerk. Council members Dodson. Aye. Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Falk. Aye. Mayor Buds. Aye. DR1. Yes, Mayor. Staff report recommending approval of the First Amendment and extension of amendment and restated exclusion, exclusive negotiating agreement by and between the City of Inglewood and Prairie Station LLC, providing for the extension and reinstatement of exclusive negotiations between the city and the developer as established in the amended and restated exclusive negotiating agreement dated November 19th, 2019. Move approval. Second. Second. Madam City Clerk. Council members Dodson. Aye. Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Falk. Aye. Mayor Butts. Aye. A1. In the name of Anthony Brissinger. As is that, there is a request for motions for settlement. So moved. Move. Second. Madam City Clerk. Council members Dodson. Aye. Padilla. If staying, I was not there. Morales. Aye. Falk. Aye. Mayor Butts. Aye. A2. And no uh, oral reports from the city attorney's office. Thank, Thank you, sir. CM1. No oral reports, sir. CAC1. Uh, staff report recommending adoption of a resolution reciting the facts and, I'm sorry, reciting the fact of the special municipal election held on November 2nd, 2021, declaring the results and other matters as required by law. So move. Second. Okay. Madam City Clerk. Council members Dodson, Aye. Padilla, Aye. Morales, Aye. Falk, Aye. Mayor Buds. Aye, CC2. No reports, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. No appointments to boards, commissions, and committees. Public comments on other matters not covered on the agenda or in the public hearings, but related to city business. One minute. Operator, are there any callers? Moving to the first caller. Your line is unmuted. The continued condescending, derisive, and disrespectful comments by Mayor Butts and Alex Padilla, who apparently thrive on inflicting chaos and suffering on people, must stop. Numerous complaints have been made and submitted to the city manager for years, and still there's no response. Chief Fronterada is refusing to provide info, meet, address, and resolve um, uh, civic and apparently criminal violations from the IPD and the stalking of women by drones in their own backyard. You can't accept funds, uh, federal funds or anything if you're violating Titles 2, 3, and 6, and more. Mayor, Judd, Mayor, Jane, Mayor James T. Butts and Councilperson Alex B. Padilla obviously think it's funny to not deal with constituents. I'm paying taxes and fees and not receiving services appropriately or at all. There's been no information, wild goose chases, and lies from administration violating ethics, professionalism, and more. They've continued this behavior throughout their reign of terror, and it is unfair, especially to have misogynist um, behavior going on in City Hall, which is an EEOC violation, as well as towards residents and more. Thank you, Ms. Kraft. Operator, next caller. Again, again, he's trying to violate the blind act. Operator, and next caller, please. That's you. That's you. Your line is unmuted. Uh, yes, this is Ray Holler, family home, homeowner in Crenshaw Imperial Village for over 70 years. Uh, you know, regarding outreach of the re regarding the uh, TOD, the only notice I got by mail anyway was a letter postmarked two weeks ago for today's meeting. And our house is one block from Benic. I would have liked to have attended the outreach meeting there and try to get you know more time with the with the with the with the like the lower level, which is for that, and not you know bother this forum. Secondly, yes, I had a short question about the water capacity charge, and somehow I got stuffed. You know, I, I did hit pound two, and I never, never got, was never able to get through. So, indeed, yes, there, at least I was one who, who wanted to make a question about the water capacity charge. I just want to know if that applies to customer service, not by the city and, and uh, <laughs> the WMD, but by Golden State Water uh, customers, like in, in down in Crenshaw Imperial Village, which sort of ties into the TOD. Which, the, which both of the fees did because those fees, the, the water and the traffic, those increase capacity, but all the TOD seeks to reduce parking capacity, and I think that's the wrong direction to go. Thank, thank you. Thank you, caller. Operator, next caller. At this time, there are no further questions. We'll close public comment. comment. We'll go to um, Mayor Council remarks. Councilman Dodson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, District 1 is having its Christmas giveaway on Saturday, December 11th. 
2021. This Saturday the 11th, I will be having an annual District 1 Christmas giveaway. I want to invite everyone to come out to Candy Can Lane to see Santa and his sleigh. Give away candy stockings as long as they are last. It is a drive through community center. So if you'd like to come, you can drive your car through. We will give you gifts if your kids are registered. If not, you can give us gifts. But there will be no fraternizing outside of your car except for the kids going to take a picture with Santa. Okay, um, there's one thing that I'm going to try to get through this, so forgive me. I would like to ask the mayor to close today's meeting in honor of my beautiful daughter-in-law, Anna Dotson. She was a wonderful daughter, wife, mother, grandmother, and the mother of IPD officer, Adrian Dotson. Her loving presence will forever be missed. She passed away Monday, November the 29th, 2021. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councilman Padilla. Thank you, Mayor and uh, Councilman Dotson. Sincere condolences to you and the family. Thank you. Oh, okay. So um, there's a picture of uh, beautiful Anna right there. Rest in peace. Uh, I just wanted to, uh, you know, invite everybody. We're, we're, I think most of us are having annual Christmas celebration, holiday, toy collections, and then we're handing them out to uh, pre-designated families uh, and organizations uh, here in, in and around Inglewood uh, that were able to bless, Microphone. that were able to bless. So uh, again, if you can attend and come out and donate toys for any of our, our, our drives, that would be greatly appreciated. I'm actually also, besides doing toys, I'm doing canned food. So if you have any canned food you'd like to donate, please come by this Saturday, my District 2 Community Center from 10 o'clock till 2 o'clock. Uh, and then we will be uh, afterwards uh, blessing the families and organizations with what we collect. So uh, again, thank you so much for doing that. If you live in District 2 and you're decorating your house, the front of the house, the Christmas lights, Please enter our decorating contest for District 2 uh, homes. Uh, so if you're interested, please call my office at 310-412-8601. Uh, we're going to be doing the uh, judging just a few days before uh, Christmas. So uh, please do it. And we have some gift certificates for the, uh, for the top three winners. Uh, a reminder to everybody out there. Because we always get calls and people get upset. You know, I didn't, nobody told us City Hall is going to be closed during the holidays. And, you know, I'm supposed to be here for this or that. So just so you know, and, you know, on the, uh, the last day it's open is December 17th, uh, Friday. And then we're closed for two weeks. We've been doing this for years. It shouldn't be a surprise. But I know folks are still going to call us and say they were blindsided because they didn't know that City Hall was going to close. So uh, just uh, beware. So get your stuff in, get it ready to go. Great presentations today, a lot of good information. I want to thank all the staff, uh, uh, you know, Roberto, that's right, that's right. Uh, great job on the housing end of it, everything that, that, that's coming out of the department with the CDBG, all these things that help our uh, homeowners uh, rent, and all that, all that, I mean, a lot of stuff, the TOD presentations, all that stuff, fabulous stuff that we're doing here in the city of Inglewood. So thank everybody for that. Uh, Mayor, I'd also I'd like to ask you to close in the memory of a, 
a dear friend of ours, um, uh, Hank Harris, who passed away two days ago, uh, very involved in the community, and um, our thoughts and prayers to his wife, Helen, and their family. Thank you. Definitely. Uh, Councilwoman Falk, District 4. Um, thank you, Mayor. I want to wish my sincere condolences to Councilmember Dodson for the loss of his daughter-in-law, Anna Dodson. Um, we are with you, and um, we support you in everything you do. If you need us, please let us know. I know this is a very difficult time for your family. Um, I want to let District 4 residents know that um, we are having our um, uh, holiday to uh, donation drive, and that will be happening this Friday, December 10th, from 4 to 7 p.m. This is a COVID-19 friendly uh, drive through <laughs> event. We're going to ask all of our District 4 residents to drop off in their car. And um, we are welcoming unwrapped toys, grocery gift cards, retail gift cards, and also toiletry items. We are planning to uh, distribute some of the toiletry items to some of our homeless residents on the street. So um, we will be doing a drive for them as well. So if you feel it in your heart and your spirit, to come on by on Friday and drive through, drop off some items, it would be greatly appreciated. And we will be blessing uh, the families, the recipients of those items on Saturday. I also have a little bit of good news. I wanted to share with you that um, I've been getting a lot of calls and I've noticed myself, the 105 freeway at Prairie off-ramp has... Um, grown and we've actually been collecting a lot of trash over there and so um, we have been working with our our Caltrans department district 7 representatives over there and of course I want to take this opportunity to thank Mayor Butts because I will try as a council member to do as much as I can but sometimes I have to call in the big guns and that's Mayor Butts <laughs> And he is always so helpful. So I want our District 4 residents to see that that area has been cleaned out. It's unfortunate. There's been a lot of debris that's been going into the zone of traffic. And it's been quite hazardous. Could cause um, some, um, some traffic congestion as well as um, car crashes. So we've cleaned out that area. This is what it looks like now. And where we're continuing to work with Caltrans to keep, keep this area clear for our District 4 residents, our City of Inglewood residents exiting off of 105 at Prairie. So that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Morales, District Thank 3. You. Just to continue that, um, you know, no, no reflect. As a matter of fact, our Public Works Department goes over and above what they can do most of the time by the freeways. And I know that Caltrans. Uh, gives us our limits, so uh, I share kind of the frustration of the 405 freeway, and over the years, you know, we've had to work with them as well, so that's good, and, uh, you know, it's a big lift for, for Councilman Falk. Um, that being said, I do want to uh, also give my condolences, Councilman Donson. You know, I spoke to you last week about 20 years ago. I think I met your son for the first time. We were handing out gifts over at uh, North Park, where it used to be inside of Hollywood Park, where they used to loan it to us. And that's where I think I met your entire family. Um, so I know that uh, the loss is great. And uh, that was just another example of how much your, your family is a part of the city of Inglewood. So on our behalf, please ex uh, accept our condolences and we're here for you. Mm -hmm. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you very much. Okay, real quick, we had... Um a couple of public comments by email, and, and it's typical of these same two people. I won't even mention their names. And their comment was, was the um, traffic impact fee going to be applied retroactively to SoFi and to um, the Intuit Dome? No, it's not, and it's not going to be applied retroactively to the form from 1967 
or Hollywood racetrack for 75 years either, because in this country, you can't pass ex post facto laws. You can't pass a law today and say, now it applies back to the beginning of time. So, but I, there are people that will do this because for some reason, they want to generate animus to entities that have invested billions of dollars to be here. Now, we're pretty smart here in City Hall, and we're working every day to position the city so that there's a minimal impact on the residents that are here to pay the bills of prosperity. And that's why this traffic impact fee was come up with. That's why the water fee was come up with, to charge people that are coming into the city now. So if anybody comes to you and says, yeah, but they didn't charge you into a dome or, or, or so far, it's because you can't make ex post facto laws. And I want to tell you that um, my heart is broken for Councilman Dotson. His daughter-in-law was only in her 50s, just a vibrant, lovely person. And, and we're here for you, George here for Ida, here for her son, Adrian. And with that, we'll close the meeting you, in the honor of Adrian Dotson and in the honor of Hank Harris, who was like an anchor person in the city of Inglewood. He was in District 1, or excuse me, District 2. And yeah, I'm sorry about that. I live in District 1. He is in District 2, and uh, he was at uh, every block club party. He was, he was always active. Uh, in civic affairs, and uh, I give my condolences to his wife, Helen, and her family, and we're adjourned. Thank you, Mayor. Mm -hmm.